two are responsible for fulfilling your duty, they are responsible for fulfilling their duty. And if they are to follow, subhanallah, Allah will grant them. They will be guided. And remember, the messenger's duty is only to deliver the message. Once he delivers the message, it's up to us to take heed. And this message is applicable not only today, but up to the end of time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who appreciate and understand before it is too late. And this is why the very next verse, Allah says, وَعَدَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ لَيَسْتَخْلِفَنَّهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ كَمَا اسْتَخْلَفَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ Allah has promised those who believe and do good deeds from amongst you that he will grant you authority on land like he did to those before you. You believe and you do good deeds. And then Allah says, and he will make it easy for you to fulfill your duties unto Allah on the earth. No fear. Alhamdulillah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to return those days to us. Also, what is of utmost importance? I would be failing if I did not utter this. The qualities of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we've spoken about his character and conduct and how we will go through it. But what about his appearance? He was created in such a way that some of his companions describe him. Hassan ibn Thabit radiallahu anhu, who was a poet, it is reported that from amongst his diwan, amongst the poems that he recited, one of them was connected to how he says you are so beautiful that it is as though you were created according to how you wished to be created. Imagine today if I'm sitting here and you know your nose and your eyes and you might sit in front of a mirror for a moment and say, oh, this is bent and that's straight and this is like this and that's... Allah keeps it that way. Everyone needs to thank Allah. You have your unique identity. Sometimes you go and change things, you actually mess things up. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. It's your identity. Be happy. No one notices the small things. It's you who notice it more. You're looking too much in the mirror. Just remove the mirrors from your home. You'll be a happy man. A happy woman more like. Allahu Akbar. It happens more to the females. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Well nowadays who knows. It can happen to the males also. Becoming too conscious. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created the best of creation in such a way. That just by looking at him. You'd love him. Subhanallah. Abdullah ibn Salam radiallahu anhu, he was a Jewish rabbi. When he saw Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for the first time, he said, as soon as I saw this face, I knew this is not the face of a liar. This man utters the truth. He is the Nabi. And immediately that same majlis, the same sitting, he had accepted Islam because he heard the words of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he said, those are the words of a messenger. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us truthful. And this is why I'd like to mention what Ibn Kathir rahmatullahi alayhi says in the tafsir of the verse. Their signs are on their faces, on their foreheads. From the sign of sujood, you can see it from their faces that this man is pious. Ibn Kathir rahmatullahi alayhi makes mention of one of the tafsirs. And he says... One of the Mufassireen have said, it is connected to your salah. Man hasunat salatuhu fil layl, hasuna wajhuhu fil nahar. Whoever's salah is beautiful by night, their face becomes beautiful during the day. Allahu Akbar. People look at you and they see, mashallah, the nur on your face. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the nur. And may he make us from amongst those who do not mistaken fair complexion for nur. Because it's a sign of our weakness where we think fair in complexion is nur. Nay, you can have a man as dark as charcoal who is full of nur. But it needs one to recognize one. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us and make us from those who realize. So that is the beauty of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa ahsanu min kalam tara qattu ayni. More beautiful than you, my eyes have never seen. Wa ajmalu min kalam talidin nisa'u. More beautiful than you, the women have never given birth to. Khuliqta mubarra'an min kulli aybin. You have been created free from all flaws, physical flaws. Ka'annaka khuliqta kama tasha'u. As though you have been created how you wanted to be created.
sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One of the points we learned last year when we were going through the, sea, the stories of the prophets of Allah, may peace be upon them all, every one of them was good looking. Every one of them had good features. Every one of them was chosen whilst they had, you know, pure proper health. And if there was any little defect, for example, of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam's tongue, it was also part of the test of the people. Tongue meaning, you know, Musa alayhi salatu wasalam hurt his tongue when he was young. So he had a little bit of a stutter. That too, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to send his brother with him. And this was the excuse that was used. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deep understanding. One of the reasons is, imagine if the anbiya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the messengers were such that nobody wanted to look at them. If that was the case, people would say, no, well, that man, you know, the way he is created by you, O oh Allah, people didn't even want to look at him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not make us such that people don't want to look at us. With us, it's connected to our link with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then we look at, very importantly, we move on to something. The condition of the world at the time of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, just before his birth, what was around? You had the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire stretched Asia, Syria, what we know as Palestine today, Egypt, North Africa, and it had its headquarters in the east, what is known today as Istanbul, Turkey. And it was known at that time as Constantinia, Constantinople. The Byzantine Empire was part of the Roman Empire. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of this in Surah Al-Rum. There is a whole surah in the Quran named after the Romans. They existed at the time. They were there. And who else was there? You had the Persians in what we know today as Iran. The Persians, the bulk of them were fire worshippers. They used to oppress their women in a very great way. And as for the Romans, what happened to them? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. If you take a look at the story of Jesus, may peace be upon him, you will find how the Romans persecuted him and how they were tyrants and how even the wars that happened between them, they oppressed the working class to a great degree. There was a lot of strife. They were dirty people who did not know how to clean themselves. Up to very recently, you find some of the kings of Europe even were proud that once a month, they used to have a bath in public. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. Once a month, you have a bath. Allahu Akbar. We thank Allah for sending Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.